The CWL Dallas Open is coming. That's how you drag people in. You see, you yell at the start of an intro and it really gets their attention. Someone's throwing their headphones. <laughs> Any one of those warnings. I find a way to be as loud as possible, always, folks. So Maven and Jack. Hi. Jack and Maven back together again for Pool D. We know all the pools now. If you miss Pool A, B, and C, what the hell are you doing? Go watch those and then come back here. If you've watched those, you know where we currently stand with which is the pool of death, you know, which one can it be? figure out later on in the video we'll give our thoughts on this one but either way pool d really kind of ties the bow on top of what's going to be an insane pool play at the city of dallas open this pool is nuts yes. uh when we drew it we were just like dear god let's just go through it um so you've got splice first with mad cat jerd vance and tommy uh then united clayster the twins and Pristini and our cities and also silly on the squad ghost basically mocks lacefield and llama god and then eg aches apathy enable nameless uh it's stacked triggered with all sorts of talent uh i'm really really excited to see how this pool plays this, out this for sure this is going to be absolutely insane. Some of the storylines in this group, some of the the history of these players. I mean, you have Mad Cat, Jerd, and Tommy, three of the most veteran EU players of all time at the top of the list. Clayster and Silly, two of the longest competing North America players on this United squad. Uh, Spacely, who's been competing since he was seven, I think. And then Aches, Apathy, Enable, and Nameless. My goodness, the storylines go on forever. Let's start from the bottom and go to the top like we always do. Obviously, we don't know the open bracket team that's going to come in, but we could also have an insane open bracket team fill in that fourth or fifth spot. Um, I think they do get the easiest of the seeds, at least, in this one, right? Because I think A got the hardest. So yeah. that's one. I mean, Which, what that the hell does that even mean? Yeah, team could be very good, too. Um, all right, let's talk about EG1. Great to see EG back in Call of Duty and Aches on this team. You know, we're looking back at probably the second greatest run in Call of Duty history behind, I would say, Optic Gaming now, back with his complexity, EG, yep. with the, you know, the, the Aches, Chrome 6, the different runs. Wow, it's actually there. weird to say that, to hear that said, the second greatest Yeah, run. I mean, I, at this point, true. It's, it's true. Um, so for EG, it started poorly. Uh, the, the first 2K is kind of what shaped things for them early on, and I think there were a lot of doubters after the first 2K. They get knocked out in the round of 32 by Rockets, <laughs> which I know when you, I, I don't think I was watching at the time, but you texted me and I just started laughing. I was like, it was game five round 11, right? Because this is a team that I didn't have a ton of faith in right when I heard the roster, just because, uh, you know, you have a lot a lot of voices, a yeah. lot of, lot of oh, leaders. God. I just fig I figured they'd bump heads. A lot of AR players, Apathy, the only kind of I don't know if natural sub's the right word, but the guy that typically play, plays a sub role. I, I picture everyone else as ARs. Uh, so I had my concerns, but throughout the next couple of 2Ks, they bounced back. What, what did they end up getting? I think it was... Uh, top 8 lost to Envy. Top 8 then and then top, top 16. 16. So, really quick for me, like, aren't they like ninth or 10th seed right now? And I, I know points. before the 3rd, they were right on that bubble. Yeah, uh, I think I, that they still are. They have to be, because yeah. they got top 16. So, 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 for me with this EG team, I'm very satisfied and, and truly believe that this is where they currently stack up right now. Is as the ninth, tenth, right outside of the cusp of top eight in North America. Do they have the potential to break in? Yes, but I still think they haven't quite figured out those kinks. I think uh, just for the the caliber of, of players, I was talking to, talking to Merck about this, but I just feel like they're one of those teams that has a honestly an incredibly low floor and an incredibly high ceiling like um if they got I, they could they could win the pool or last in the pool i'm not i'm not kidding it's just how, how yeah. i see it uh i don't know i'm really excited to see how they do hopefully no teammates from eggs on to enable last time they team there were some interesting results but they did get third of champs um <laughs> they had some impressive wins too you know they bd6 uh they, oh another kind of cool story well not cool story line if you're a phase fan but I believe they were the team that ended FaZe's chances of getting into pool play because they knocked him out. When was it? I jotted it down somewhere. Uh, I think it was round of 32, I believe, yeah. in the final 2K. So had FaZe beat them, they, they probably would have had to go a little bit deeper, but EG said no. So they shut the door on him and able to did the job to his old team. But yeah, uh, EG, if they're your lowest seed in this group, you know things are going to be ridiculous. Up next, we have Ghost Gaming, uh, Spacely, Mox, Lacefield, and Llama God. Which, for me, a team that has been quietly pretty darn consistent in these two cases. Like, it's it's like there's been so much talk about everybody else that, like, 
this Ghost Gaming team just being top eight and you know just still remaining a consistent team that's a threat when they play well, but when they lose, you're like, oh, they just lost. It, it, it's crazy to see where they currently are. So uh, Aches and I argue all the time, and I already mentioned this in the draw show, but uh, he, he made it. I said we, we, we argue about online versus land all the time because yes, I know online can be frustrating for players, but yeah. typically the results are. I mean, there's no argument. They're very similar to what you see on land, and I, I think I asked him something along the lines of, are you? Upset with any of the ten teams in North America is that for me it looks great. I mean, maybe a surprise or two, but it looks solid. And he said the only thing that really stood out to him is he thought Echo Fox deserved to be in over Ghost. Um, <laughs> and when I actually, <laughs> it's always very outspoken with that. When I actually went back and looked at the brackets, this is what living in New York City is like. Every episode, you see me react to something outside. Go ahead. <laughs> Once again, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, you're talking about cheat is, cheez is me. What is it? Oh, oh, the Echo Fox thing. Okay, so when I went back, when I went back and actually looked at Ghost brackets through the two case, yes. um, they didn't have one very impressive win. Uh, I, I believe they beat. I, like, uh, I think. The, I think it was that they didn't have a very impressive <laughs> win leading into the, like, like leading up to the third, because in the third they wind up. You know, taking down LG, taking down Ground. Oh yes, yeah, it was the first prior to it. They got two top eights, and it was like uh, I think I think one of the wins that stood out was like Meth's team, and then I believe it was like the the Canada superstars with uh, Goon Royalty, Royalty and crew. Yeah, uh, and I hope my memory serves me correctly, but I believe that's what it was. There just wasn't really that many impressive wins. Yeah. and one of the big things that was talked about is you know, they have they have a team house together, which yes has has some advantages, obviously. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I, I I personally still I think they're gonna, they're going to play great, but it's yeah. just uh, worth noting that there are some people that are like. Ghost Gaming, a team that has all the backing they need. These guys live together every single day. They stuck together after champs, one of the few teams to do that. And I think that's a reason you want to root for them too. Yes. Um, they stuck together, you know, you can tell, even back to joking around last year when Spacely had his notebook with the you know, S&D plays and taking notes, like, you can tell they're dedicated how badly they want to win and I will always take that over players that are just seem like 100%. more self-entitled and stuff. Like, 100%. you just know they're hungry, so. Talking about teams that stuck together from champs last year now to here. The second seed in this group, E United, which for many people could probably be a top seed per group. Clayster, Pristini, Silly, R Cities. They have a very rough start with the 2Ks that really put them in a, in a hole. Top 16 where they lose to E6 in game five. Top 16 where they lose to LG in game five. And we talked about it during E6's pool, like where that series is kind of defining moment for them. It was defining the opposite way kind of for United because it just put them in a hole very, very early. Um, but yeah, controversy aside with the third 2K, they get it done. Um, Dude, <laughs> there was a lot of United fans and people that were on edge because were they even going to be in pools? Well, guess what? They are the team that they went into that 2K and they secured their destiny, winning that first place spot. They had that crazy series versus Optic Gaming going game five, round 11. Currently, United are the only team to have beaten Optic Gaming in a true competitive match. In, in a competitive setting right now, because 2Ks for me are the, it's like 2Ks, lands, and, and champs, so like the, the, the tiers, and they beat Optic in a 2K. They're the only team to have done that yeah, so far. It's impressive, and I know I've just said that, I say it all the time, it was players or teams I kind of root for just because the stories and whatnot, but yeah. I, I hope Clay plays till he's 50. I, I just, <laughs> when he is involved, just whether it's from a trash, trash talk, storylines, you know, in fact, his team with so many players had rivalries with so many players. Uh, you just want him in big Absolutely. matchups. And, you know, I will, I said, I want to say this was two years ago. Was it? I can't remember if it was heading into IW, but I, I made a comment. I can't remember if it was on a show or just talking to somebody, but I, I, I asked, like, I was like, how many years in Clay has left? Like, he's one, he's been around so long. Yeah. Like, he's one of the older players. He's got to be 24 ish at this point. No, he's, he's 25 pushing 26. Yes. Yeah, okay, even older. So oh, at that point. Typically, yeah, well, typically, though, once you hit around. 24-ish is where you see either a decline in play or just life kind of catches up with you in the sense that there's I think a, it's more that responsibilities yes. and life starts to catch up with you. But usually around that age is where you sometimes see people drop Absolutely. off. And I, I guess I kind of expect that to happen, but... Not in Playster's house. He's, he's still here. The man is carrying the jetpack duo in our cities and Pristini. Now those guys are, are talented. I think they've done a great job of, of learning and adapting quickly in this game, but either way... The number one seed in this group, the number one team out of Europe, and the one squad that is, or organization at least, that has won a major international event on U U.S. soil. 
against top NA talent, Splice, Mad Cat, Jerd, Vance, Tommy. This lineup has everything you could want from EU. This lineup has everything you could ever need to try to beat the top NA teams. It just simply comes down to starting off by doing well in this pool for me. They can just start off in this pool, I'm gonna say it now, this pool of death, this is my pool of depth for the, depth for the CWL Dallas Open. They need to come out here and start off this year where everyone's questioning, are the EU guys, did, did jetpacks help them? The old, you know, splice with the snaking last year, this with that, ban and protect and Black Ops 3 helped them. They're back in boots. If there's a team that's gonna do well, it's this team from Europe. Yeah, I think I still I think they're the best team in the group, even though it's so stacked. Uh, my my question comes here just just right. It's just come to Tommy now. I, Tommy, one of the best players of all time. I freaking love the guy. He's yep. he's a, he's an incredible individual. Uh, one of the most passionate guys. One of the greatest people in our in our industry. Um, but at times, over the past couple of years, you could put some blame on him for poor tournament results. Like there were times where he was in the like bottom four of all players at an event in KD. Yep. I know KD has not told the whole story, I get that. But against maybe top EU competition or middle of the you know, tier, he can have poor series with these guys and yep. it'll be fine. But when you play the likes of like Optic Gaming, if Tommy's just getting destroyed, I don't know if they're gonna be able to beat top teams. I, 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 you I, can't I, have weak link, simple as that. You cannot have weak link. Splice, so they get first place in the first 2K, taking down Red 3-0. They get second in the second 2K, losing to Red 3 So that was kind of where people started that rivalry talk and that chatter. And of course, it was shot down by Josh, which we addressed in the last video. Uh, and then finally, uh, first place, they beat Vitality uh, in the French squads. Uh, they also take out Supremacy earlier in that tournament. Splice, for me, a team that's absolutely the real deal. It's not like, oh, you know, they won two 2Ks in a U. They're on liners now. They're going to beat the best team in Europe on land as well. Predictions, though. I want to ask you real quick though about sorry, just real quick about Splice. What is uh, I'm curious your opinion. Do you think so? What they won one event last year, had a, a top two, and then we're pretty consistently what top fourteen in that ballpark. Do you think they improve upon that overall? Like, do you still see them winning an event, maybe more than one this year? No, I don't. Not a major open event. Not a major global open. And they won what? what stage two, one. They won stage one. Yeah. And they got second. At yeah. Anaheim yeah. to LG, uh, but either way, I've got Splice and United in this group getting out. I don't care who comes. This is the only group where I don't care who comes to the open bracket. Truly, throw whoever you want, and this is from the open bracket. I think Splice and United get the job done. And we talked about they face the lowest open bracket seed overall as well. Are you caught off guard by this question? You knew that was coming. Yeah, no. I just once I looked at it, I, I, there was part of me that wanted to say EG and come up with a reason why, but no, I I, I agree with you. I think I think it should be Splice United. And that I don't feel the most confident in it, but I think they're the two best teams right now. There, they 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 should take it. Wow, that's our pool thoughts for Pool D done. Our predictions are out there. Get in the comments. Leave a like. Subscribe. Still to come oh, this don't. weekend, we got travel, but we're gonna figure out, we're gonna do the videos, figure out what we can do, bang, bang, bada, boom. We should be fine, because we have these to kind of cover us the next couple days. And we so, get back, what do we get back? Saturday. Saturday, and the streams will return then. Uh, but you're probably seeing this on Saturday, so that means nothing to you. But listen, Grandpa, Maven, and I, we love you, okay? I want you to do your homework. I want you to get outside, and what else do we want them to do? I don't care. Okay, well, that's it for us. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time, friends.